I make more money in one day than most online gurus make in a year. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how new ideas are making you broke. And I'm gonna show you exactly what to do instead if you wanna make money online. So let's do this. So there's three key ideas that I wanna start this video with. So these three key ideas, if you understand these, will help you know really build a good foundation for what we're about to talk about. So the first key idea is that simplicity scales and complexity fails. So in my previous business, which I sold a number of years ago, it was health, fitness, wellness online, selling products to consumers, right? Weight loss, energy, info products, supplements, et cetera. And part of the reason that I sold the company was because I wanted to get out of it. It was way too complex. We had literally hundreds of funnels and dozens upon dozens of products. It was very, very complicated and very much, you know, like with anything, if you're the like the jack of all trades, you want to become the master of none. And not just from like a specialty perspective, but also it's, it's impossible to focus on more than one thing really, really well. And this is one of the biggest problems I see amongst health professionals and online entrepreneurs in general is that they're always looking to start the new thing. And this is part of why I talk about new ideas will kill your business and make you broke. So the key thing to remember here as we get into this is simplicity scales, complexity fails. Second key idea is that where attention goes, energy flows and results show. So you have to understand that the most important commodity or the most important currency, I should say, that we're all working with is attention. We're trying to get attention from the marketplace, but you're also you, it's not your management of time, it's your management of energy and attention. So if you sit down on a daily basis and focus on work, if you're focused on two or three different things, that is a fraction of how focused and powerful you can be and effective you can be if you focused on one thing. It's very much like, you know, the analogy of having a magnifying glass. If you took the magnifying glass and allow the sun's rays to beam through it, you can literally start a fire. But the sun's rays in and of itself, without that magnification and focus, you know, is just gonna produce some heat. Right? So the goal here is that we want to think about how do we really laser in our focus and focus on one specific thing because that's where all of our attention goes and where that attention goes, results will start to show. Third key idea is that specialists make a lot more money than generalists. If you just think about this, think about general practitioner, brain surgeon, who makes more money? It's obvious, right? All right. So I want to dive into this and tell you why I killed three product lines in Healthpreneur. So when I started Healthpreneur back in 2016, I wanted to create a business that was based on simplicity and focus because my previous business was the complete opposite. And, and just for context, you know, we helped half a million customers in that business and it was built on multiple seven figures. I was a New York Times bestselling author, one of the health industry's leading authorities. And by all means on the surface, everything looked good, but I knew I never wanted to run that kind of business again. So I started Healthpreneur. I said, I'm going to do one thing. I'm going to do it extremely well and stay laser focused. However, as we got into our journey and as things started doing well, you know, we're doing seven figures, et cetera, I started to get my creativity wheels going and I'm like, you know what, we could also do this. And so my first variation off our main program, so our main program is called the Health Business Accelerator and it's helped over 1300 clients over the past seven years. It's our it's our bread and butter, it's incredible. But in this on this journey, I was like, okay, that's doing well. What about this? So for people who maybe can't work with us at this level, maybe we could build something that's more entry level, we'll call it first client formula. It was a DIY course. And if you've watched any of my other videos, you know how much I think those are a complete waste of time. Yet, I built this course. Launched it, we kept it live for probably eight months and then decided to kill it. Why? because it was a pain in the ass dealing with terrible customers. You know, the less people pay, the less they pay attention. And the less they pay, the more of a pain in the ass they are. And fundamentally, it really, I'm, you know, I'm looking at the customer journey and then like no one's going through the modules, no one's going through the work. So therefore, like, why am I even selling this? Like they're not actually doing anything. Therefore, they're not getting results. It's extra operational burden on our company. It's not worth it. So that was killed. Then about a year later, I thought to myself, you know what? We can also help health practitioners build their brick and mortar because we we specialize in virtual. And so we spent six months building out a new coaching program called the Health Practice Accelerator, had a bunch of clients come in and then had a philosophical awakening, if you will, to say, why am I helping people build their own prison? Which is what I think a brick and mortar is. I think it's a complete and utter waste of time. Um, and I'm not saying like there isn't a place for brick and mortar for patients to be served and so forth, but as a business owner, I would never ever recommend setting up a brick and mortar. That's just my personal opinion. Our, our whole focus, our vision has always been to help people grow online because that's how we can help more people. That's how they can help more people. That's how they can create more time and location freedom. And that's how I built my business, right? For 17 years after being burned out doing the one-on-one -on -one stuff in person forever okay that was the second product line i killed and then recently we launched money code 
And Money Code was, uh, again, at the shooting of this video, probably started the development of it about seven months ago, launched it near the beginning of the year, and again, had some ideas of how we wanted to test this, the offer, the price point, et cetera. I think it's a great program. You know, it's, you know, helping people with their money issues, et cetera. Most entrepreneurs were financially illiterate, whatever, which is why they run into issues with, you know, profitability and cash flow and, and all that kind of stuff. So it was addressing all of that stuff. And again, you know, price point, sub $1,000 DIY course. So just for context, the first client formula was a course. HPA was a coaching program and Money Code is a DIY course. Same idea. We decided to do a free trial for seven days and get, obviously, you know, give people the experience and then they would obviously be rebuilt at a discounted price afterwards. And it was an absolute fucking nightmare right? The types of people coming in, bottom feeders of the world. And this is really unfortunate to say this, you know, people complaining about like, oh, I can't afford the pain. They're not like 500 bucks. I'm like, that's exactly why you need this program. And I started to recognize how this was affecting me energetically. And I'm like, why am I even dealing with this? Like, why am I spending my time even entertaining this stuff? Within the past couple of weeks of the shooting, I decided to kill it. So killing three product lines and only focusing on one thing, our main dish, the health business accelerator. So I wanna share three reasons why I made these decisions. So the first reason is that to sell a course in which you are not speaking to people on the phone and enrolling them, to somehow get people to a checkout page and for them to hit the buy now button and spend several hundred dollars, most of these people don't even know you, good luck, right? The issue there is it requires absolute operational excellence. And what I mean by this is you need people who are obsessed with copywriting, making offers, conversion rate optimization, driving traffic, split testing, you know, eye tracking, all this kind of stuff. And if you don't understand what I'm talking about and you're trying to sell a course that's not selling very well, there you go. And when I looked at our business, our business is built on the business model of a high ticket coaching program. And what was happening was that we have great people built for that, but then I was starting to peel them off into supporting money code, for instance, in this case. And there was a bit of a disconnect in terms of operational execution, in terms of their excellence with some of this stuff that wasn't making sense. And I'm like, am I gonna hire a whole new team just to build out and fulfill this couple hundred dollar program, it didn't make sense. What I started to recognize was when I looked at my time during the week, I was having energetically to divert a little bit of attention to money code. And then I was thinking, you know what? There's some gaps here operationally that I need to fill in. I don't want to do that because if I do this, I'm taking away my attention and focus away from the main thing, which is the bread and butter of our business, which generates 20 times as much profit and actually helps our clients. And is a joy to work with clients at that level, as opposed to Oh, I don't know. It's, it's too much money. money. So I would rather be world-class at one thing than mediocre at several. Second reason, I'm just gonna be very honest with you, I have zero interest in serving the bottom of the market, okay? Take it however you want. Uh, there's a very, very big distinction in the quality of people and prospects and clients. Some people say a buyer is a buyer is a buyer. That is complete bullshit. A buyer who's spending a dollar with you or a hundred dollars with you is not the same human being as someone who's willing to spend 10, 20, 50,000 dollars with you. It's fundamentally a different person. And some people can evolve to that level over time. And I'm not saying you're better if you spend more money or not, whatever. I just don't have patience to deal with people who don't don't see the value in investing in themselves. And it was just an energetic drain, terrible customers. And very much like I talk about, you always get what you pay for. I would much rather spend several thousand dollars to get a premium, amazing client than a couple hundred bucks to get someone who's not gonna do anything, okay? Third reason, and this is a big one, is the opportunity cost and resource allocation. I kind of alluded to this in the first reason. The thing is like, for every hour and dollar we put into these products, basically taking away that time and money from other things. So let's just say as an example, I'll just use 100 to keep it simple, put in a hundred dollars to run ads for our HBA stuff, okay? We spent a lot more than that, but I'll just use a hundred. So hundred bucks. All of a sudden now, I'm having to spend that plus whatever else on any of these other products we decide to launch, right? And that's fine. But again, it's double the work, twice the messaging, different messaging, different avatars, twice the management in terms of ads, etc. So what does that mean? We have to spend more money on something that's way less profitable. I have to have team members manage all that stuff. And that's diverting attention from the main thing. So from a simple standpoint of, well, if I spent $100 here and $25 here on advertising, why don't I just spend $125 on the main thing and get way better results? And these are the decisions that are really important to make in business because amateur hour, which I would 
you know, I've been part of Amateur Hour, which I'm just gonna launch all sorts of new stuff, right? New is exciting, new is better, no it's not. When, when, I, when I talk with anyone and they're like, yeah, like I'm working on my next course, my next book, and I have all these things in place, I'm like, you have shit in place. You just have a lot of stuff. It's like having a bunch of cars sitting in your garage and you don't even know how to drive. And if you do know how to drive, you can't even find the keys. And if you do find the keys, none of the cars have any gas. So they're sitting there, there's no forward momentum, and you're still having to pay for insurance and maintenance and the burden of having them sit there. That's what it's like when you have a lot of stuff and no momentum forward. And I see this all the time. I share this with, with as much love as possible. Like I love serving health professionals because you know, we're changing the world, they're changing the world, but it's, they're also plagued by their intelligence. They think that they have to develop all these courses and books and they, it's a disaster. You will never get where you want to go. And this applies to any, if you're not, if you're not a health expert, you have an e-com business or anything else, this applies to you as well. I, I shot another video about premium pricing, comparing athletic greens, a one skew, multiple eight figure company versus some of the stuff we did in my previous business. Okay. This is the power of focus is like when you do one thing extremely well, your whole team's attention is on that, the money is focused on that, your personal focus and, and, and what you do on a daily basis is focused on that as well. Split focus, split results. This is why we don't work with agencies. And I talked about this in a previous video somewhere too. When you work with an agency and they're running your ads, you are one of 50 clients. Now they're doing the work for you, which means that their attention is split. And I promise you, cause I've worked with some of the best of the best pending retainers upwards of 15, 20,000 a month, the world's best cost copywriters or the world's best media buyers, they need margin. So they're bringing people in at the lowest possible level. So they have margin to be able to scale that. And that's what you're working with when you work with agencies, as opposed to bringing everything in house, which is what we've done. We focus on it 100% and the results are astronomically better. Okay. So those are three reasons why I killed those three products. The core idea here is that the more stuff you do, the more you're going to suck at more stuff. You do one thing extremely well, you will absolutely crush it. It's just a matter of time. So there's three big takeaways I want you to get from this video. So number one, building a great business, not just a side hustle online is fucking hard. Okay. It is the hardest type of business to build. It's a lot easier to build a brick and mortar. People actually see it. No one sees your stuff online. No one. Okay. So you have to be very proactive in how you market and get your stuff out there. A lack of singular focus makes it exponentially harder. That's the first thing I want you to take away. The second thing I want you to take away is do one thing so well, you become world-class at it. Bruce Lee once said, I fear not the man who's done 10,000 kicks once, but the man who's done one kick 10,000 times. True mastery is that maniacal singular focus repeatedly done over and over and over and over and over and over again, okay? And the other thing with that is that it takes 10 times more quantity and time than you think it's gonna take. So if you are focused on making advertising work, for instance, which is something we help our clients with, I tell them all the time, you launched one ad, congratulations. Don't start crying because it didn't work. Talk to me after you've written your 50th ad and test that because the vast majority of the stuff you put out, whether they're ads, whether they're social posts, whether they're videos on YouTube, whether they're anything, most of them are not gonna do well at all. Get over it. 80-20, okay? 20% 20 of your stuff is gonna do well. The other 80% is just learning and testing, okay? With that said, I want you to understand that I used to ask this question to people, hey, what's what's new and exciting, right? If I was talking to them about business, it's actually a really bad question to ask because I don't want to know what's new and exciting. I want to know what's boring and more of the same because boring leads to better and better leads to a booming business. By boring, I mean, you do the thing you need to do that you know you need to do, but it's like, oh my God, this is just so monotonous and boring. Like I got to write another ad. Yeah, I have to practice more sales calls. Yeah. I have to like this and split test this and up to, like write more emails. Yes. And it's boring as hell. And this is the dilemma for entrepreneurs is that we get into business because we want to create things out of thin air, which is awesome. But that's also the very tendency that's going to destroy your business is this ideation machine that we all have, which is great, but you need to find a way to channel that ideation into singular focus. And for me, it's really been through content like this. I'm able to express my creativity horizontally instead of launching new products and courses all the time. Steve Jobs, when he left Apple and when they brought him back in, one of the first things he did is he killed half the product line. He's like, why are we doing all this garbage? We're gonna do one, two things and that was it. We need to go back to who we are and what we do best and throw away everything else. You have to be very confident in your decision making, you have to understand the consequences of doing too much stuff. Like if I just look at money code as an example, it took me, I don't even know, five weeks to shoot all the videos. That's five weeks. I mean, when I add up all the hours, pfft, 
probably 100 hours of content, right? In terms of the development, the thinking about it, the organization, the shooting of it, that's 100 hours, 100 hours. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of opportunity costs that could have been put elsewhere. So all of that time, if we had just not even done that and put that focus into our main thing, we'd probably be even further ahead than we are right now. Okay, so it's really, really important. Third and final thing I'll share with you about making money online and just building a great business is play the long game. Most people have such a short attention span or more specifically, they're looking for the quick win. They're looking for the quick buck. They're looking for the instant gratification. That's amateur hours. So when you see these videos of guys like, hey, you know, I make 10K a month. I'm like, great buddy. That's awesome. It's a good place to start, but you're not even starting. Like, be in the business of whatever you're doing for as long as humanly possible. When you look at Chick fil A, like their founder, it was making chicken sandwiches for like 76 years before he died. That's it. They had 12 menu items. They had more profit than Starbucks, McDonald's, and another fast food chain combined. Like, I mean, that's the power of focus, and that's the power of being very committed to doing one thing exceptionally well for as long as humanly possible, because the longer your time horizon, the better decisions you'll make. And if you want to do more than 10K a month, if you want to build something that really impacts people's lives, you will start making better decisions, not based on how do I make money tomorrow in this month, but how do I build a brand that stands the test of time. And if you're around 20 years from now and you think you might be making a little bit more than 10K per month, you better believe it. You'll be making 10K per hour. So if that's the type of business you wanna build, hopefully the lessons in this video have resonated with you. And if they have, remember to subscribe. There's a button somewhere around here. And if you're a health professional or coach and you wanna see how I would build a million dollar coaching business from scratch in under 12 months, watch the next video somewhere over here. I'm gonna walk you step-by-step step through how I would do it, exactly how the math breaks down. And you can literally take that as a blueprint and start with that. So thanks again for your attention. Yuri here signing off and watch that next video. I'll see you there.